Hi there, this is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films and welcome to another episode of my Consecutive Criterions where I pick out some runs of Consecutive Criterion spine numbers and just have a brief little chat about them. Again, I'm not um, Criterion complete because otherwise that would be Consecutive numbers 1 to 1200 and something. So um, it's actually a four number run this episode, so it's numbers 163 to 166. Um, so we'll start with 163. This is a Region A Blu-ray from the year of 1980. It's 105 minutes. And it's Hopscotch with Walter Matow, Glenda Jackson, Sam Waterston and Ned Beatty. Again, Ned Beatty in another... Um, support and performance but is absolutely fantastic as he is in network he's actually got the best be speech in network um, not peter finch this is a light-hearted little spy film um, one of my dad's favorite films so i was exposed to it from an early age and very much like taking a pill in one two three also starring walter matow um, the first several times that I saw it, I didn't realise there was actually sweary language in it. Because whenever it was on television in the UK, um, it was always edited out. But Ned Beatty swears like a trooper at moments in this film. Um, directed by Ronald Neem, who at this point was older than he was when he was younger. Um, I mean, Ronald Neem again is one of those kind of sneaky good filmmakers that because he directed all kind of genres I don't think he kind of gets um, much respect or nobody really talks about him he did The Chalk Garden with Deborah Carr which is um, an imprint and indicator which is absolutely fantastic with Hayley Mills and John Mills and he made lots of other films that I can't think of right now. Um, but I'm sure he did war films and all manner of um, things. And this just never stops. It's just a a wonderful, twisty, turny little spy caper. Uh, Walter Matow is kind of fed up with his new boss in the CIA. Ned Beatty, who's wanting to do things the modern way. So Matow decides he's going to retire, but in his retirement he's going to write his memoirs and be very honest and give away secrets. And so he kind of disappears and leaves little crumbs of where he's going to be and he starts sending pages, um, which upsets Ned Beatty, but also interests Herbert Lom, who's the Russian KGB head. Um, who is kind of friendly with Matow because that's kind of the olden days of working. Um, so the Russians are after him and the Americans are after him and Glenda Jackson's in Austria and she helps him even though she's worried that they're just going to make him disappear. And Sam Waterston is um, kind of his protege who will be taking over his job who really doesn't like Neg Beatty either but he just doesn't want Walter Matow um, to be hurt. Again, it's kind of light-hearted, even though um, it is about serious things like national security. Um, Walter Matow had to um, get some special dispensation. You know, the first scene takes place in Germany and Walter Matthau after World War II wasn't a big fan of the Germans um, but he got kind of extra money um, and also he got a job for his son who's in the film and then he eventually decided okay I'll shoot the first 
kind of scenes of the film in Germany then. Um, he globe trots all over Europe. He's in London and and with Ned Beatty um, giving full chase and getting more and more frustrated. Um, it's just a lot of fun. It's another fantastic Walter Matthau performance. Glenda Jackson's brilliant. Um, everybody's wonderful in it, really. Um, great artwork. A wonderful yellow disc. Um, it's a 2K restoration. There's interviews from 2002 with Ronald Neem and writer Brian Garfield. And there's a 1980 Walter Matthau appearance on the Dick Cavett show. Um, trailer and teaser. And there's an optional broadcast television audio track for family viewing. Um, and the booklet has an essay by Glenn Kenny. Yeah, it's just a lot of fun. And might very well appear on my favourite 25 films of the 80s, which will be appearing at some point. Um, next, uh, number 164 is something a little bit different to Hopscotch. Uh, from 1972, it's 166 minutes long. And it's Russian. Um, this is Solaris, not the George Clooney remake. Um, this is the Tarkovsky behemoth, um, his response to 2001. Um, and again, Tarkovsky films, you don't necessarily, or I don't necessarily watch them. You kind of feel them and they kind of immerse you. Um, in a world, if you're willing to just let go of the seat cushions, seat cushions, and just um, float into the television, um, again, this is about a strange planet um, which is affecting people on the ship orbiting that planet. Um, and scientist Chris Kelvin is dispatched um, to go to the planet and investigate what's going on. Again, it just looks gorgeous again with Tarkovsky. Time and water and nature um, and leaves and trees play a large part um, as well as the production design of the ship is very atmospheric. It's got wonderful atmosphere. Um, perhaps not my favourite of Tarkovsky films. Um, but again, it's just something that you watch and you dip your head under the surface um, and you hear strange things. Um, this has a commentary by Andre Tarkovsky scholars Vida Johnson and Graham Petrie, which is very informative. And um, there's nine deleted and alternate scenes, um, video interviews with actress Natalia Bondarchuk, cinematographer Vadim Yusuf, art director Mikhail Romadin, and composer Eduard Artemiev. There's an excerpt from a documentary about Stanislav Lem, um, the author of the film's source novel, and there's a booklet featuring an essay by critic Philip Lopate and an appreciation by director Akira Kurosawa. Um, I mean, I did have the Curzon Artificial Eye um, Blu-ray, but the print on the Criterion um, is superior to that, I would say. Um, and again, this is the Region B Blu-ray. And um, again, the joy of Criterion at 165, something completely different from Solaris. Um, this is Man Bites Dog. This is the DVD. As far as I'm aware, this doesn't have a Blu ray. Um, this is a Belgian film from 1992, um, 96 minutes. This is a film I actually saw in the cinema um, while I was at university. And it's one of the few films that I've seen in the cinema. Um, that a large proportion of the audience walked out at certain points of the film. Um, this is a documentary or a mockumentary, if you like, about a film crew who follows this 
Um, well, serial killer about, even though he does kill people in several different ways. And as the film goes on, um, the crew kind of become complicit in his actions. You know, they'll catch victims and help him do crimes, including one particularly shocking crime. And also we, the audience, become complicit as well. There's a kind of party scene where they break into somebody's house. Um, and it's very jovial and, you know, the crew's enjoying themselves. The lead character, um, Ben, played by the very rubber-faced and expressive um, Benoit Poulevard, I believe. Um, and as an audience, we kind of were enjoying it, even though we probably shouldn't. And then it just cuts to the following day and uh, there's things that aren't funny in any way, shape or form. You know, there's a kind of running joke about sound men keep getting um, injured or killed the same way in Spinal Tap, the drummers keep dying. Um, again, it's not to everybody's taste. As I said, when I saw it in the cinema, half the audience left. Um because it's not everybody's um, sense of humour. Um, maybe that's why it's never been upgraded by Criterion to Blu-ray. Um, but again, I think there's more going on in the film than people give it credit for. It's kind of ahead of its time. You know, 1992, as far as kind of handheld... It's not necessarily found footage, but it's creating the footage. And again, it's that question of even the documentary filmmakers, how much is actually natural behaviour of the subject if you're being followed about by a camera and a crew. Um, and obviously the killer in this film plays up to the camera, starts spouting poetry or his own version of poetry, um, you know, to pretend that he's kind of somewhat higher of a character than he actually is. I mean, we, we meet his family, which is not that pleased about. Um, but the film, at the end, is a very moral film, even though the things that go on in it perhaps aren't very moral. Um, yeah, it's a, one of those films that reflects onto the audience as well, and maybe that's why it makes some people uncomfortable. Um, so that's 165, and that's Man Bites Dog, I believe, just on, well, just on DVD and Criterion. I don't know whether it does have a Blu-ray somewhere else. Um, and then finally, 166, something completely different again. And um, this is Jarm Jim Jarmusch's Down by Law. Um, this is from 1986. This is just the DVD that is, that is available on Blu-ray and Criterion. I've got a Blu-ray... Um, on another label and um, this is 107 minutes and again this is in typical um, Jarmusch style this has three disparate characters that we see um, at least two of their backstory the three of them end up in a jail cell um, not much happens in the jail cell they argue um, one of them, played by Robert Bagnini, is obviously the outsider, and everything is gives a sense of wonder um, to the wonderful Tom Waits and Jeffrey Lurie, not Jeffrey Lurie, um, John Lurie, Jeffrey Lurie, own, <laughs> Jeffrey Lurie owns the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, John Lurie has two kind of. Um, Fairly unlikable characters, but they're still likable because it's Jim Jarmusch. And then the film in the second half becomes something else. Um, and the thing I love about it is there's no explanation to why it suddenly becomes something else. Because um, you don't need an explanation. Um, it's probably the first truly great 
Jarmusch film. Obviously, it has had several since then. Um, but after Stranger Than Paradise, which is still very good, um, this was kind of a step up, even though it's a sort of similar um, fish out of water story. Beautifully shot, um, black and white cinematography um, by Robbie Miller, who would shoot quite a lot of Jarmusch films. Um, it's actually a two DVD set. Um, with the booklet um, and this has Thoughts and Reflections by Jim Jarmusch, the original theatrical trailer, isolated music track, optional French dub track featuring Roberto Benigni, optional French subtitles, English subtitles um, and the second disc is a 2002 video interview with DP Robbie Muller, 1986 Cannes Film Festival press conference with Jim Jim Jarmusch and John Lurie, Robert Benini and Nicoletta Brasci. 1986 John Lurie interview with commentary, outtakes, the music video of Tom Waits singing Cole Porter's It's Alright With Me, directed by Jim Jarmusch. Q&A with Jarmusch, Jarmusch's phone calls with Waits, Benini and Lurie. Um, production Polaroids and location stills. Um, so it's a pretty well packed release. Um, and this is just wonderful Jarmusch um, with wonderful Tom Waits. I'm a huge Tom Waits fan as far as his music's concerned. Um, and his acting is magnificent as well. Um, and he gives a wonderful turn here as a broken hearted DJ. Um, John Lloyd's character is um, a little bit less likeable seeing he's a pimp. Um, but it's another kind of shaggy dog story um, with these three shaggy dogs in prison and perhaps out of prison too. So that's Down By Law and that finishes this little four title run of my consecutive criterions. So please let me know what you think of these four films, if you have these four films in Criterion or whether you have 162 and 167 as well. Um, and hopefully you'll join me again for more consecutive criterions. This is Solitary Ronan from Solitary Ronan Films saying farewell. <laughs>